You are listening to the Nightline Sports Network, brought to you by Travis Dever and the Dever team, 386-690-1636. Welcome to Nightline at Night on WDBO, 1073 FM and AM 580, Night Nation's only call-in show goes live now all right hello night nation hello orlando or wherever you're listening to tonight we are uh live from the dever team studios brought to you by chad bar law we're raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney give chad a call 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com you can also call travis dever for all your new smyrna beach real estate needs 386-690-1636 I am Andrew Fegley, and this is Nightline at Night. Uh, we're taking your calls as well, 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326. You can call us, talk about some UCF sports, talk about the AD situation, talk about the football head coach situation, talk about whatever you want UCF-related, or we'll even talk uh, Super Bowl if you want to. Uh, or you can use the open mic feature on the WDBO app. I am AP Nightline on Twitter or at UCF underscore Nightline on Twitter. I got Big Ben Stout here with me. Uh, he is at Big Social 32 on Twitter and Roger Phipps at Night Bingle. Night Bingle uh, from the Santa Rosa Beach Studios. Guys, how are you? Doing all right. Good to see you again. <laughs> Doing great. Uh, sad that that Bengal part is not in the Super Bowl that you were referencing before. Well, you can't win them all, or or many of them actually. Or for, many of them the, in this for year for the Bengals. <laughs> five five more days, buddy. To you and I, we go we go at it in the yep, Super Bowl. Ben's team is the Bucks, and my <laughs> team is Kansas City. I am originally from Kansas City. Moved to Orlando about uh, 10 or 11 years ago now, uh, and uh, I am a diehard diehard Chiefs fan. Uh, never ever would root for any other team, really. Absolutely. So, it is what it is. All right. So, uh, also a diehard Knights fan, obviously. Uh, and we got issues for basketball. We got issues. <laughs> oh, we got boy, big, we go. big issues. Uh, we got issues with a lot of things, actually, but basketball just happens to be one of them. It's piling ben, on. And it is all your fault. <laughs> it is big time piling on. This, this last month for UCF fans hasn't been a great one. Not good. No. We're still looking for an AD. We're looking for a head coach for football because they both went to the Tennessee Volunteers. And they did not they're, they're definitely they, not volunteering. They did not volunteer, exactly. That's for sure. So, You're using my joke now? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you were the first one to ever say that. <laughs> I know, but here, here's the good news: um, we do, we are interviewing AD candidates this week. Oh, well, that's that is good news. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I would hope they. I hope they step on the gas on that front. That's for sure. Yeah. So yes, they are. Uh, they are working on it. Uh, they're. We're expecting an AD to be uh, obviously hired before a football coach. I think we all pretty much know who we want to be the head co football coach. The players know. I think we talked about a lot of this last week on the show. No, actually, um, we we actually uh, were making fun of, and I, and I will. I said I would eat crow. Uh, you know, if, if it was actually it last happened, week it was it was when the article was first released that it was you know it was. the leading candidate. And I said that he wasn't did. going anywhere. And we both kind of pushed all our, all of our chips in the middle of the table and said, well, "No way." And normally, I gave you yeah. a big hmm, and you guys laughed at me. <laughs> normally. With the way that Danny White does things, nothing leaks, and there's some always some smoke thrown. So right. we thought that was the smoke. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it wasn't the smoke; it was the fire. So yeah, we woke up on Wednesday morning, and it all it all came to pass. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Josh Heupel obviously leaving, and I honestly that makes quite a few UCF fans happy because there were a lot of people that weren't too happy with the way that uh, the Josh Heupel tenure had gone here at UCF. So Apparently some of the players, too, both former and current. Yeah, I mean, they're always, you know, there's always players that, that can go the other direction. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 
we have we've heard some of that. We haven't heard a lot of it. I mean, I don't know that we've ac- actually heard anybody say anything completely negative, uh, especially a current player say anything negative about him. Uh, there's been some things implied, but there hasn't been anything you know directly said in negative about him. So I wouldn't go there, but. Uh, but for sure, there's some UCF fans fans that that kind of got what they wanted. I always say, be careful what you wish for in a situation like this, because uh, Heupel was 28 and eight at UCF. Right, 28 and eight. There's not a lot of fan bases that would be upset with a coach that's 28 and eight in yeah. any sport. But yep. those eight, man, they were doozies. Well, it, some of them were. Some of them were by one point. I mean, at the end, one of the, play, one point. At the end of the day, I mean, Coach Heupel's tenure here is just kind of an odd one. Um, I mean, he was put in a tough position to begin with, you know, trying to follow up uh, the undefeated season where Scott Frost left right after that. So he, you know, he held it together that year, that's for sure, with a lot of help from Mackenzie Milton and others, um, for sure. But uh, I mean, he went twelve and zero his first twelve games, and um, and we lost a really tough one um, right after we lost our. Not too far after we lost our quarterback, our 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 main guy, um, you know, to the LSU Tigers in the Fiesta Bowl and in, in, in the end of that season, and so, you know, since I think that I think that he will be rightfully remembered for that season and holding it together, and really, I think, kind of seamlessly transition or the best he could have done in that situation. It's well, really the first year was definitely first year, seamless. I, I mean, mean, and he and he held it to and and. That's really difficult to do to come off of all of those expectations and and you know Scott Frost leaves and he comes into a, a situation and I thought that he handled himself really well and helped with that transition better than most could um so I I think he should be remembered for that season definitely but then also he's going to be remembered for losing close games uh for the most part which is another strange dynamic of Josh Heupel's career while he was 28 and 8 Seven of those losses were, um, you know, by less than a touchdown. Some, in some cases, you know, a one point, two point, three point loss. And so, while you certainly don't want to get blown out in those eight games, only one of those was uh, was a blowout. And but, it was the last one, right? So, and I think the cumulative effect of like losing those little, you know, those those squeakers, the ones that you know really matter in the, in the crunch time. Um, it waned on a lot of UCF fans, obviously, and um, and at the end of the day, he seemed to want to go ahead and take the challenge elsewhere when Danny White presented it to him. Yeah, and that's a big challenge up there at it Tennessee. Uh, they've got a lot going on. They fired their AD and their football coach uh, because of some NCAA violations, um, particularly paying some players. They got busted. <laughs> Uh, money in McDonald's bags, right? <laughs> money in McDonald's bags, and credit cards. credit you- cards that, yep. The leaving credit cards in uh, unsavory places. We'll put it that way. Yeah, oh, strip clubs. They left. <laughs> yeah, they there left, you go. Well, I was going there. If you if you just <laughs> would have let me, I was in the middle of, of of saying it. So yeah, so they they left a credit card at a strip club that that the players were at, and uh, it was it was a team credit card. You, you don't do that. That's oh, that's that's usually going to get you in some trouble. So. Uh, besides being accused of paying players, then using a team credit card or a university credit card at a strip club, you know, there's there's issues at that point. So there's a lot to clean up there. And, and they've got their, their work cut out for them. And I, I honestly believe that that's why uh, Danny White took that job, because it's a huge challenge. I mean, it was a challenge technically for what he was doing here. Because he was the guy that came in after George O'Leary left, oh, and, and yeah. needed to zero and twelve season right. needed to resurrect our program, and did big time. He absolutely did, and he and he hit a home run on almost every one of his hires. Uh, you know, as AD here, uh, it is actually you mentioned that you know Danny White certainly has experience in turning around a program like that. But it's it's interesting is it is a unique coaching challenge for Josh Heupel to because now he's going into Tennessee, which is kind of in shambles. It's way different than when he entered UCF. Uh, Do you think we were on the, top of the, the world. job for for Coach Heupel is a harder job there than it was here? The the thing that made it so hard here was the expectation that was on him. And I said whoever got the job after Scott Frost had the most difficult job in the entire college football you know realm. 
Yeah, I think I think it's probably a, a just a touch more difficult what the situation he's going into, and I say that for both Danny White and for uh, Josh Heupel, and I mainly say that because we we all expect some of the uh, you know reports that we just mentioned. We do expect some some sanctions to be coming from uh, the NCAA on, or whether they're self-imposed by Tennessee or just coming from the NCAA, where they may have reduced scholarships. Uh, they they may have have a postseason ban of sorts, so it's going to be a difficult road to recruit in the SEC uh, with those type of things going on for at least a couple years. But I you're mean, right; the expectations knows, are lower. Who knows what the the implications will be of that? I mean, there's been teams in the past that that have been caught doing stuff like that. SMU that was given the death penalty, and and th- their yeah. program was a was a huge program back in the day in the uh, Southwest Conference, SWAC, and it destroyed the conference when they when they got the death penalty, basically. Not only destroyed their, their program, but destroyed the conference that yeah, they were in. Yeah, I mean, that it's was... not, obviously, Tennessee's situation is not going to destroy the SEC. It's not going to happen, but, and they're not going to get the death penalty because that's just something that doesn't happen very often, and, and I think the NCAA learned probably yeah, from so the SMU too, yeah. situation. You know, so I don't think that's going to happen, but it's going to be pretty close, I think. I think they're going to get hit really hard. So that's going to make Danny White's job and Heupel's job extremely hard. Right. Um, and I think that Danny White wanted the challenge. I mean, he's that kind of guy. He saw an opportunity and, whoa, wait a second. If I can resurrect this, imagine what I'll be thought of. I mean, imagine what my legacy will be. It won't just be turning into a camera at UCF and saying national champions. I think yeah. the difference between the, the, the two of them and the situations they're walking into is I think that Josh Heupel's leash will be a lot shorter than what Danny White's will be. So, you know, if anything, it may be a sacrificial lamb kind of situation for him because uh, you're right. I mean, that's a lot of challenges for, for a head coach to come in and try to re- uh, correct and or resurrect. There's going to be a time uh, where he's going to be dealing with recruiting challenges because there'll be scholarships taken away, et cetera. I mean, we can pontificate all we want, but at the end of the day, we know that Josh Heupel is going to be hamstrung when he goes into that program. So I think, you know, the the biggest challenge for Josh Heupel now is going to be time because I think time's going to run out on him, even if he would have been successful at Tennessee with everything that he brings to the table. I don't think he's going to have time to do that. And I mean, the positive is he's going to have generational wealth out of it. But I think <laughs> the difference between Danny and, and Heupel is, At the end of the day, Danny's going to be sticking around Tennessee for a while, especially even if Heupel doesn't succeed. I don't see the same type of patience for Heupel. Well, I mean, obviously, kind of. I mean, you know, he's a football coach. He's not the the AD. The AD is the guy that hires football coaches. So, of course, Danny White will make him his sacrificial lamb if if he has to, you know. But, I mean... there's going to be a few years, I believe, that he'll have a chance because of uh, of the sanctions and everything else, because everybody knows about what's going on there. So I think he'll be there longer than you think he will. Uh, I, I wouldn't just give him like three years or something. I, I think it's going to be uh, a little bit more than that. So uh, we're going to talk more about this uh, a little bit later. We're going to talk about basketball We're going to give away some uh, Tijuana Flats cash, so listen for the time to call and get that. Uh, Money you can use to buy Tijuana Flats food. All right, back in just a couple of minutes. An auto accident can change your life forever. At Chad Bar Law, we are raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Hi, I'm Chad Barr, and I want you to know that our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the representation you deserve in your greatest time of need. If you or a loved one have been injured in an auto accident, call 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. At Chad Bar Law, our clients come to us in need and leave us family. Offices, Altamont Springs. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach, your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach, proud sponsor of Nightline. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. 
Looking for more out of your Porsche? Look no further than Flat6Motorsports.com. They have the widest selection of aftermarket Porsche parts anywhere in the world. With over 85 product lines and in-depth expertise, Flat6Motorsports.com is your one-stop shop for any Porsche performance needs. Whether you're shopping for intakes, exhaust, suspension, or tuning, they have you covered. Flat6Motorsports.com is the premier Porsche aftermarket specialist. Check them out at Flat6Motorsports.com. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDVO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night. I'm Andrew Fegley, uh, brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036, for a free consultation, or visit chadbarlaw.com. We're taking your calls, 844-580-WDBO, 844-580-9326. Got Big Ben Stout here with me, Roger Phipps from the Santa Rosa Beach Studios. We're talking UCF Sports. We're talking the Super Bowl. We're talking all kinds of stuff. So we're talking, uh, we were just, uh, b- right before the break, we were talking about uh, AD Danny White leaving to go to Tennessee and taking Josh Heupel with him. And there, there are issues that they have uh, to go and deal with there. What I want to talk about real quick here, though, is the issues that we have to solve here because of that. Let's not focus on Tennessee right. anymore. We, that's what you said, Ben, during the break. <laughs> and, and you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, we need to focus on UCF. Uh, this is a big, big deal for UCF, especially given tomorrow is National Signing Day. Tomorrow. Uh, now, National Signing Day obviously has changed quite a bit with the early signing period. We have pretty much our entire class. Most of them are already here, in fact, because we went after kids that could be here in January, graduate early from high school, and and be on campus. So most of them are already on campus. I don't think that we're going to lose anybody that I know of yet. I haven't heard anything about losing anybody. Uh, But, you know, with flux uh, uh, of the situation, that is possible uh, for kids to either want to transfer when they find out who the new head coach is, or the new AD, there's all kinds of things that could happen. So, uh, first of all, UCF needs to hire an AD. They're looking for an AD. Uh, they've got a guy internally that uh, was was uh, Danny White's assistant, Scott Carr, knows everything that Danny White was doing, knows exactly, you know, the whole deal. Uh, so, you know, he has to be a candidate. I believe that he is. And the players have been asking uh, for a head coach. Jeff Lebby is who they're, they're clamoring for, uh, who was the offensive coordinator the first two years that Josh Heupel was here, I believe. Yes, the first two years. Uh, yes. And then went to Mississippi State with Lane Kiffin. Ole Miss. Ole Miss oh, yeah. no, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Ole Miss. I, I say that all the time. I've said that a couple times. Um, Neither one of them are good, so well, you're Well, I, I forget about Ole Miss. Yeah. I mean, uh yeah. Anyway, so yes, Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin. Uh, he has been contacted. I know his ears are open. I know, uh, and you know there will be talks. I'm sure, but they still need to hire that AD first. A lot of times, an AD just like Danny White did at uh, Tennessee, taking Josh Heupel with him. A lot of times, the AD wants to hire that football coach. So, I would assume if they hire Scott Carr within that Lebby's chances are a lot better. Uh, I would think Lebby's chances are pretty good with all the players and former players and even current new players that haven't even hit, hit the football field yet clamoring for him already. So, and it's, go ahead. Well, I just, ha- I haven't got a chance to talk about this yet on air. And it's, it's just, uh, and I just need to say this because it's, it's so, uh, and I've, I've talked about this in text message, like, I, I, this is a groundswell like I've never seen before. I mean, maybe it's more uh, first first of more to come in the social media age as, as, as it is, but just what we saw since, you know, probably about a day after Josh Heupel left. The, the same day. Yeah, it was it basically started the same day, yeah. but but really the big name players started to come more and more and it just was like this giant wave of former and current players 
on not just the offensive players that Jeff Levy would have interacted with on a daily basis, but defensive side of the ball as well. Just this huge groundswell on social media of of these players just like saying to the world and ultimately to UCF and President Cartwright that we want Jeff Levy as our next head coach. I mean, that's got to feel great for Jeff Levy. It was something that was like really just kind of awesome to see in yeah, this day and age. It is awesome, but the only th- problem is if they hire an AD and he doesn't hire right. Jeff Levy, then there's a problem, I think. Uh, and, and I mean, a lot of fans have joined in on that thing, too. I mean, I was one of the very first ones. I, I texted the guy yeah. like at 11 o'clock that day, and, and I'm like, we need you here now. We need you back at UCF. I, that's what I said to him. Um, he said, I'm all ears. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what happens, though, if they hire somebody else? It, it could make I mean, it a little bit awkward. I mean, I, I think that at the end of the day, though, the administration at UCF, whoever is like ultimately making this decision as a, as a group or a, a individually, if it's Cartwright, whatever that may be, um, they, they need to do what's best, what they feel is best for the school. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a business decision. And so you can't l- completely let the, um, the team, uh, the players, even somebody as good as Dylan Gabriel is, you know, drive exactly who, you know, be that ultimate decision maker. But just like we did when Scott Frost left, you can't we brought, let the inmates run the prison. Well, well, just like <laughs> just just like we did when, uh, just like Danny White did when Scott Frost left. I mean, I think it's important for the next AD, whoever he is, to bring in the players, especially the key contributors who are going to be here the next couple of years and are committed to UCF. I think one of the things that I was most upset about. Well, we'll we'll, we'll continue it after. Yeah, the break. yeah, yeah. Well, we got a couple seconds here, but yes, uh, all kinds of stuff. We'll talk about it here when we come back. Going to a break. We'll be right back on Nightline at Night. Night Nation, I need to talk to you about something very near and dear to my heart. It's Tijuana Flats' new fajita tacos, available for a limited time. Grilled chicken or steak with fajita peppers and onions, garlic lime sauce, and guajillo chili salsa. Topped with cheddar jack cheese, crisp iceberg lettuce, and fresh pico on warm flour tortillas served with chips and salsa. We're talking good vibes and even better flavors from a whole nother plane of deliciousness. Available for a limited time either in-store through their app and website for delivery or pickup. These aren't just fajitas. They're something better. True enlightenment. Fajita tacos. Available for a limited time only at your neighborhood, Tijuana Flats. I'm Jeff Allen. Join me each and every week on the Nightline Sports Network for the AAC Report. We bring you in-depth coverage of each school in football, basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, golf, tennis, and more, as well as bring you insider interviews and focus in on the biggest games and news of the week. That's all right here each week on the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. Welcome. This is a promo for the Take a Left at Albuquerque podcast, new to the Nightline Sports Network. You should listen to it. I say things like this. We need to stop blaming Jerry because we would do the exact same thing. Thing if we owned the Dallas freaking Cowboys. Do you know how much fun it is to own the Dallas Cowboys? My guests will say things sometimes like uh, this. It's it's the Lord of the Flies thing that happens when they don't understand that things are wrong, spoiler alert, until Piggy dies. Yeah, um, the it, Lord it, of the Flies has been out for like like a hundred years. Like, I don't even know. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry to everyone at home yeah. who I spoiled the book for. Our book's been out for like 90 years or something. And sometimes, rarely though, I'll say really stupid things like this. If they don't make it out of the West and the Raptors get to the finals, I will go on either this show or whoever show and say that Kawhi Leonard is overrated I because I have too much evidence of it. New episodes drop every Friday with me and some of my good friends right here on the Nightline Sports Network. And now... Back to Nightline at Night on WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night, I'm Andrew Fagley. We're brought to you by uh, Chad Barlaw, coming to you from the Dever Team Studios. Uh, Chad Barlaw, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. 
Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. You can also call Travis Dever for all your new Smyrna Beach real estate needs, 386-690-1636. Also, you can call us, uh, 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326, or you can use the open mic feature on the WDBO app. I am AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. Got Big Ben Stout here with me at Big Social 32 on Twitter. Roger Phipps at Night Bingle on Twitter. And you can find all the rest of our content, other podcasts and such on uh, NightlineSports.com. Got a lot more stuff there. Uh, we're talking UCF stuff. We're talking UCF <laughs> basketball. We're talking a lot of talk about AD and head coaches tonight uh, for, for football. Uh, we're going to get back into that. And then we're, we got to talk a little bit about basketball. And then at some point we have to talk a little bit about the Super Bowl as well. So <laughs> got a lot to pack in this next half yes, hour. Uh, I'm going to start this off though. We have a new segment that we started last week. Uh, we have a new sponsor that's Tijuana flats. And this is the uh, Tijuana flats uh, hot take of the week. So here's a little uh, sounder for that. Welcome to the Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week. Visit TijuanaFlats.com for takeout or delivery, or visit your local Tijuana Flats. Tex-Mex for everyone. All right, Roger, go ahead with this week's uh, Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week. I'll tell you what, every time I hear that, it makes me hungry and it makes me want to dance. So, uh, you know, make sure you're going to see the good folks at uh, Tijuana Flats. They have an amazing sauce, hot sauce bar, so make sure you're taking advantage of that. Great food. And for this week's Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week, I'm going to say that women's softball, women's volleyball, and men's baseball will make their respective tournaments this year. So all three teams, if you'll remember softball was on fire before COVID cut their season short, was expected to make the tournament. And uh, one of the things that is advantageous for us this year is a lot of those uh, players are going to be back this year. So they were seniors. They're taking advantage of the ability to come back. So welcome back, Haley Barano, Takia London, Jasmine Esparza, Gianna Mancha, Justine Molina, Georgia Blair. Remember that big hitter from Australia? And Aaliyah White. Uh, for our core nucleus of seniors that are coming back. They were all great players last year, and Aaliyah was tearing up on the diamond. Uh, Volleyball has been playing well again and has uh, picked up some talent this year. They're already um, off to a a fast start uh, for their season. Morgan Chambers is a star, and uh, McKenna Melville will be back for us as well, which is a big, 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 big big-time win. All and right, so uh, I hear what you're saying, uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna keep track of these hot takes because I want to know what <laughs> happens with all these uh, in the end. Uh, so what we need to do right now, though, is I want to give away uh, Tijuana Flats has been so cool with us and is giving us uh, a Tijuana Flats cash is what it's called. I got a little card mm. here, and it is ten bucks that you can use free Flats cash. 10 bucks that you can use at Tijuana Flats, uh, any of them, any Tijuana Flats that's out there. Uh, so if you call 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326 and Ben is going to give us what you need to come up with when you call. Because it's right. a little trivia here. Yeah, we got a little bit of trivia. We're going to make it easy on you tonight. Uh, so this is a UCF basketball question since I'm, since I'm asking it. Um, and the, the, bas- the basketball question is this. Who is, who, which head coach in UCF basketball history has the most Division I wins? And I'll give you an additional hint. He was my head coach at UCF when I played. All right, so there you go, 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326, and you will be the winner if you can answer that question. Uh, so uh, Ronald in the studio there can will we'll answer your call, and uh, we'll take uh, the, the first one on the air and, and see if they can answer that question. So Sounds that'll be good. cool. All right, so back to let's let's talk about basketball because we got to get this out of the way. 
<laughs> get it out of the way is right. That's I good, mean, let's get it out of the way. I, I like that. I don't buy that. I wish I didn't like that, but I, I do want to get it out of the way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm speechless and, and I'm not speechless very often. You all know that. That is true. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what has happened with with the team. And I ask pretty much I start our segment off on the podcast with you, Ben, every week. What has happened to our basketball team? Well, that's what I'm going to say again. What has happened? Uh, the basketball game the other night, if you saw it last night, uh, was was absolutely ridiculous. Twenty eight turnovers by UCF. Twenty eight. Yeah, I, I mentioned it on Twitter. If you, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw some of my rants last night. I tried to only keep it to the text message between the three of us that uh, host this show. But um, uh, so it was one of the worst basketball performances I've seen of Johnny Dawkins' tenure here at UCF. And mainly because of those turnovers, not only, not only um, you know, some of the steals, they, they had 20 steals, uh, UCF, did, or excuse me, Memphis had 20 steals against us. I, I mean, that's got to be a close to a record for their program history. 20 steals is, un, is absurd. Um, and, you know, you mentioned 28 turnovers. A lot of the passes were just egregious. We actually uh, forced 21 turnovers on their part, but it really didn't matter on that front because they were shooting lights out. And we weren't putting up much of a, uh, while we got some steals of our own, we weren't putting up much of a fight and getting a hand up, especially from deep. They were knocking shots down, and it just all unraveled from the very beginning. And we were just making silly passes. And last night is one of those uh, games that, as a team, we need to maybe watch the film for about five to ten minutes, maybe like two or three plays, and just get up from the get up from the TV screen and go go out and just you know uh, try to run their walkthroughs today because. That's one that you just kind of throw away the tape on. It was an awful performance, and 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 you heard it in Dawkins' voice in the post game press conference. Yeah, uh, here's what he had to say when he was asked if turnovers are the most uh, frustrating situation that's going on right now. It definitely is. I mean, because this leaves too many easy baskets. I mean, we score 40 points off our turnovers. That's almost half of what they scored, and uh, 33 the last game off the of turnovers. That's just way too many. And this is a function of just taking care of the basketball. You know, we got to be better with the basketball out front and be more poised with it. All right, uh, Johnny Dawkins was also uh, asked what he said to the players after this. We have another opportunity on Wednesday. This is one game. It doesn't count for more games because of how we played. It counts as one. And we have a chance to, you know, redeem ourselves on Wednesday. And we need to make sure we have the right mindset, come out there fighting together to try to make that happen. All right. Yeah, go ahead. That, that is what makes this situation and what happened last night as bad as it was. You know, and he said it's only one game. And so even if we won by that amount and we had we had a spectacular full performance, we only get counted one game. So that's what makes this whole situation very unique, what happened last night, because they get to play against the same team tomorrow night and, and hopefully, um, you know, a chance to redeem themselves from what just happened last night. So it's a very interesting situation. Yeah, also, so, Johnny Dawkins was asked real quick, here uh if there's an advantage to that on either side you know i don't necessarily think so i think that it's going to be a new game i mean i'm sure you know both teams will have things they want to work on based on how this game was played so there'll be some adjustments being made i'm sure but at the end of the day i don't think you know one team's had an advantage really when it comes down to that i think both teams will have the same type of opportunities for uh, success all right roger go ahead with whatever you wanted to say no i was just gonna say um that uh, you know we're 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 okay. I've got some good news. The most steals in a game was not uh, by Memphis against UCF last night in NCAA <laughs> Division One history. There's the good it news. was Oklahoma versus Centenary Louisiana in 1987 with 34 steals. So I just wanted to put that out there. Good news, Night Nation. Yeah, that's that's the good news. I I I, I will hope. Um, I mean, the number one thing that I hope that Johnny Dawkins is working on with his guys this year, this the, today, I should say, in practice today, is how to handle the full court press. And one of the things that I really noticed as as that I was getting extremely frustrated with is. When Memphis would press us in the full court and we're taking the ball at, you know, underneath at a bounce, 
you can't just run towards the ball and catch the ball on the side, like two feet from the from the baseline, and let these two guys trap you. It was just it was just like mind numbing thing that I saw that about ten fifteen times, along with getting picking up the ball right after you cross half court in that corner and allowing the guys to trap you. There's there's some fundamental things that we got to clean up when it comes to the press break. This was Same a ninety six sixty nine loss, by the way. We gave up ninety six so points. points, which uh, Johnny Dawkins is known for defense. That uh, has to be a record in team. the Dawkins era. I'll have to look that up, but that has to be a record. Yeah, I mean, they were well on their way to 100, and, and I thought they were going to get it. I, I thought that <laughs> the first half, I, I think I texted you, yeah, I you said, did. they're going to score 100. Right. Because uh, they were just going, absolutely going. So And they would have if they didn't make some uh, you know bad passes on, the, on, their, own, on their own side. Uh, but uh, certainly they were shooting lights out, and it was a – it was one of those games you need to re- you need to forget, move on, and hopefully we can we can well we need to play a lot better tomorrow night against them. All right, nobody well, but- has gotten our question right yet. By the way, eight four four five eight zero nine three two six. Ben, give the question one more time. All right, uh, the the who which UCF basketball coach has the most Division One wins in UCF history? Okay, and then you're going to win uh, some Tijuana Flats uh, Flats cash that you can use at Tijuana Flats. I'm sure somebody wants that. Uh, you got to come up with the right answer, though. <laughs> All right, uh, Roger, go ahead real quick. No, I was just going to say, to Ben's point, I think the biggest thing that you're seeing this season, and it happened in Wichita State as well, was just our guard situation is not where it needs to be. Yeah. Um uh, right now, um, Dre's being asked to do, handle a lot of the, the guard duties that would normally have gone to other folks. So we have one guard that was Tony Johnson that was supposed to be starting, had uh, showed some good flashes earlier on, and then had a uh, had a knee injury. And then, you know, the, going back to your point, too, though, Ben, I have some questions around fundamentals. Why is Perry not have the basketball more when we know we're getting pressed because that's the big piece of it. And then secondly, we, we, our team has not figured out how to help uh, when we're dealing with a press and a trap situation. And those are the two big things that have, um, that have happened that have really impacted our ability to play because we're, we're playing well when we have the ball, but it just seems like those turnovers and it's been a theme all season. And early on we were saying, Hey, it's because this is a brand new team meshing, but I really think our guard play, and in today's uh, NCAA basketball, guard play is huge, is what's hurting us. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I will say as much as I've seen some great flashes, especially of ball making, uh, ball handling and play make, playmaking ability from Darius Perry, he was, um, Dre Fuller and, and others weren't, weren't the only ones committing turnovers last night. I mean, Darius was certainly part of that mix. There was, there. I, I just mentioned catching the ball on the baseline and picking the ball up too early. Uh, he was definitely guilty of that. We've got a, a systemic um, issue with turnovers as a team that we've got to clean up and we and we have to break the press as a team that's the only way we're going to do it all right well we're going to continue this conversation here uh very shortly we're still waiting on somebody to get that answer right for that trivia question for the tijuana flats uh flats cash we'll be right back on nightline at night Hey Jeep Wrangler owners, have you ever sat in your office at work and watched the rain just pour into your Jeep because the weatherman said that there was a zero chance of rain? Or you put your doors back on because there was a 100% chance and then not a drop of rain fell? Well, there's a company out there that can help take the worry away and give you the peace of mind to be without your doors. The company's called Life Without Doors. They make waterproof rain curtains and dash covers for Wranglers. Life Without Doors is there to help make the decision to leave the doors at home an easy one. Find out more at lifewithoutdoors.com. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. And now... 
back to Nightline at Night on WDVO 1073 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night. I'm Andrew Fegley. We're brought to you by Chad Bar Law. Uh, Big Ben Stout is here with me at Big Social 32 on Twitter and Roger Phipps at Night Bengal on Twitter. I am AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. Uh, we're talking UCF sports. We've talked uh, pretty much the entire show. We talked a little bit about basketball. And uh, the next game, by the way, is coming up tomorrow night. And guess who it's against? It's against Memphis, Memphis again. A <laughs> uh, weird situation with COVID and everything that they put these two games back to back like that. Uh, very strange. But, uh, you know, my favorite thing, the, the matchup predictor on, on ESPN.com, it only gives us a fifteen point eight percent chance. Yeah, and that, of winning that, that game. That was at it, that was at a twenty percent chance before we won the game or before we 19. played the game last night. Yeah, it was oh, well, nineteen. Okay, 19. Okay. Well, it's dropped. Uh, we, our our chances of winning that game has dropped since last night, and I don't blame them. Yeah, they're a ten and a half point favorite, which is a lot in yeah. basketball. That's like a, a that's like a twenty point. It's a big in, swing in football. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so 8 p.m. ESPN Plus tomorrow night, UCF against Memphis. Uh, hopefully our guys can do a little bit better. Uh, I do want to talk real quick. Uh, we have a winner for our contest, right. Noah from Apopka, and the correct answer was? Kirk Spiroff. And he gave it. So yeah. uh, he gets the uh, Tijuana Flats, Flats cash. <laughs> All right. Um, and, uh, yeah, congratulations. Go, Noah. Congratulations, Noah. Absolutely. Okay, thank you for playing along, by the way, those of you that did, that didn't get your right answers either. That was, that's awesome. Um, so the Super Bowl <laughs> coming up. This uh, Is there a Super Bowl There's coming up? a Super Bowl coming up. <laughs> Is the Kansas City Chiefs against the Tampa Bay Bucks? That's right. Uh, the Tampa dun, Bay Bucks, dun, dun. which is very strange playing in their home stadium. It's in Tampa. Uh, very first time that's ever happened. But they are, even at home, a three-point underdog. Which I'm loving. Right. Well, we all know it. The Super Bowl isn't necessarily a home field advantage. I mean, those well, fans, technically uh, fans it's their home, though. It is. Well, it is an interesting advantage this year because of the Chiefs not really traveling until I think Friday. Uh, is, you know, so it's not like they're going to be in Tampa all week. You know, enjoying the festivities of Super Bowl. They're going to be coming in right. You know, relatively right before the game. You know, a couple of days before the game. And and as we know, for the last two weeks and up until the end. Um, you know, Tampa has been able to enjoy sleeping in their own beds. Yeah, well, so that's, that's an advantage. That's what that's that, an well, advantage. That, yeah. that is where the advantage comes in. I, I'd say there's not a home crowd, but I would agree that there's a home home field advantage. Well, you know, maybe this is the thing that the NFL should look at. The team with the best record, though, would be the have it played on their home field. This would mean that they would have to play some games in wintertime uh, situations, right. though, which I think the NFL should do, personally. They, they did it, like, one time in New York, And I, I think believe. they did it in Minnesota, too, when they opened up their uh, stadium. Yeah, in but Minnesota, yeah, so... but that's still an indoor stadium. So right. they need to do it in an open stadium, in the cold weather. I would love it. Because uh, that would, would I was mean about to say, it would be that, an Arrowhead would be stadium. Chiefs, but, yeah. Well, no, anyway, I don't care who it is. I, I still think that that's the way that they should do it. The neutral site games, you know, I just think it would be a little bit more fun with a home, with a home field, a true home field advantage. Even though most uh, normal people can't afford Super Bowl tickets. We were looking earlier uh, before we came on, and, and the cheapest ticket on uh, Vivid Seats on, on ESPN.com was $4,400. Yeah. That's that's like two uh, mortgage payments for me and my utilities. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure, yeah. There's no way. No, I yeah. always said that I, I mean, I've, I'm a lifelong Chiefs fan. It took them 50 years to get to the Super Bowl last year and win it. I said, you know, I've always said I would go to the Super Bowl if they got in. But when I saw the ticket prices, there was no way. And it's been, you know, within a couple hours of me for two years in a row, and I'm still not going to make it. Yeah, so. I mean, same here. That I, with the with being a lifelong Buccaneers fan, and and just and I always said when it, since college, my freshman year of college, when we won the Super Bowl back then, you know, I I, I said when I was you know at a certain age, and I you know maybe could do it like i i would love to be able to go to a super bowl if the bucks are in it and there's no way that i'm going to be able to afford that 
yeah. certainly I certainly don't want to uh, try to spend that t- type of money. I will say though, I'm going to be, going to be spending Super Bowl. Usually, we have people over have a little bit of Super Bowl party. Not this year. All right, <laughs> all right, uh, Roger. Thank you, uh, Ben. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you in the studio. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll be back next week. Nightline at night. Go Knights. Charge on. <laughs>